Yo, yo. Yo. There he is. What up? What's hey, how's it going, man? It's, I'm so sorry, dude. I haven't used Zoom in so long. I had to fucking figure out how to like re-download it. What, what, yeah. what do you mean you haven't used it in so long? COVID was like a week and a half ago. Yeah, man. You, I don't know if you noticed, but we didn't really like do too many interviews for the last like four <laughs> years. So <sighs> we did not need we did not need Zoom or anything. How are you guys doing? We're good, doing good, good. Uh, so we're joined today by Boba Cod, vocalist of Bless the Fall, whose new song, Wake the Dead, is now streaming everywhere, and the band will also be performing on the sold-out 2024 Emo's Not Dead cruise this coming February alongside Yellow Card, Sleeping with Sirens, and more. Oh, yeah. Story of the Year? Come on. Story, Story of the Year is on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of familiar faces on there. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty gnarly. Like, we got added after it was already sold out. So hopefully those there's some Bless the Fall fans. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be some crossover there. There's got to be. There's Isn't, like, Prada be. playing, too? I, I feel oh, yeah, like Prada's there's some metalcore. It. Prada's on it. August Burns Red. So th there's oh, definitely a little bit of crossover, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got so. you all, like, siphoned off in one corner of the cruise boat so you can all play together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... The metal corner, the metal core corner. Right, right. the monster energy stage. That's precisely the monster correct. energy uh, deck, if you will, <laughs> which would be kind of sick, actually. Uh, I feel like somehow you and a minor threat um, tank top is the most you I've ever seen. Like that, you showed up exactly in costume. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've added the hat to the ensemble these days. I went on stage with a hat for the first time in my entire life. It's probably not a big deal to anyone, but. <laughs> we were playing we were, we were playing in uh Tampa and we got put on the outdoor stage and it was like dude, it was like a, a lightning storm you know crazy crazy like hurricane blew through and we almost didn't get to play and they're like it, it's probably gonna dump rain while you're playing and I'm like I'm wearing a hat on stage and the guys were like wait like <laughs> are you sure I'm like I am the Derek, you know, for the Derek uh, uh, from, you know, state champs of metalcore. So I'm going to wear. Oh my God. You really are just stealing his look now. I didn't even think about it. You know what, man? It's, it's fine. It's gotta... It'd be great if like suddenly he had like a little bit of an emo fridge and like he grew yeah. his hair out. It'd be Yeah. I'm actually going to see him on, on Tuesday. They're coming to town, uh, state champs and boys like girls and the ready set and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I'm gonna discuss it with him. I'm gonna see how he feels about me, <laughs> me taking his style. Is this a soft fun. launch? Do they know yet? Does he know? <laughs> he doesn't know yet. <laughs> no, I, I'm in a, like I'm in a, a hockey fantasy chat with him, and I always chirp him about how like I'm like I don't know why that's funny, but that is hilarious to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's like the Paul Mark from Silverstein. Yeah. Uh, one of the dudes from Sleeping. Like it's just it's a whole like just this crazy mashup of of people that come together for the love of hockey. So, but uh, I always chirped Eric about it. I'm like, dude, you fucking lucked out, man. You made it wearing hats, like your thing. And now you don't have to worry about your hair. Like you just wear a fucking hat. And you like his new photo shoot that came out. He's like in a super dope suit and he's got his hat on. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you like, didn't even, didn't even put in the work for the, for the, for the so really nice photo shoot. Are you saying hats permanent? I, no, it's not permanent. It's more of, but you know what? I'll, I'll I busted out every now and then. So for the rest of the tour, I was like, is it a hat night? Is it a hat? And the guys were like, come on, dude. <laughs> what are what are what are the guys worried about? Like, 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 are they worried that like Bless the Falls image is gonna take a hit? <laughs> well, they're just like it, it looked like they A, they wanted to like, they kind of wanted to like dress nicer on stage at this tour. And I was like, I'm wearing a black cutoff and skinny jeans and vans. So <laughs> Picking up right That's where you not, left off, yeah. But yeah. I will, but but I will purchase a new black cut off though. <laughs> it will not be a reused one like it usually is. Is it but. is it brutal for you like attending a wedding? Like is it the like the not being able to wear the skinny jeans in vans? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I no, I like I mirror those feelings. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we did it for our music video though. We all we all you know we dialed it in a little bit. So we had suit jackets. Yeah, and, yeah it was it was it's hard to rock out in like i don't know how some bands do it man like when they wear like really nice stuff on stage like i can't move i can't i can't put my leg you know to this i can't do the lunge the metalcore lunge it's a know? different vibe for sure it's a completely to, different to be vibe. fair you move a yeah. lot more than a lot of other people so. <laughs> that's true yeah that's true i, I and I've, I've noticed that too i'm like is it just me is it just <laughs> maybe it's me it's appreciated to be fair yeah uh we have some uh rapid fire get to know you questions if you don't mind yeah, let's do it. 
Where are you like literally right now? I'm in my kitchen. And then this is your, uh, you have Batman and Wonder Woman in your kitchen. Yeah. My wife painted that year when we, we had, uh, we had an apartment together in Toronto when we were first like dating and stuff. And she painted this like massive, um, Batman, you know, about to make out with Wonder Woman thing. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's epic. It made its way out to the West coast and it's, it's our, our centerpiece of our, that's her DJ set under there. <laughs> that blanket. So what a uh, multi-purpose kitchen is it like, oh, if yeah. you panned out, would it be more pop culture or is that the singular piece? Um, well, there, no, that's, there's that. And then, um, in like the hallway, uh, there's huge blown up, uh, pieces uh, from her, her comic book. Mm. So, um, they're like huge prints or whatever i don't know what the like term is and in, in the art term but they're like it's on canvas and then they're all like, drawn by her right huh all drawn by her yeah 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 all drawn by her and stuff so down the hallway there's the there's like three huge ones this is pretty cool so yeah okay that's it are you you're not in canada anymore right no i'm in canada you are in canada like right now oh, yeah oh yeah when that you say west uh... coast like canada does not <laughs> it doesn't come to mind <laughs> Pacific Northwest, we're tucked right. away up top. Yeah. It look, you know what's funny is that British Columbia, if you look, if you Google it, it looks like a they took California and someone just went like this because it's the same <laughs> shape. It's so funny. So yeah, I feel kind of at home. Right. It's, the California of Canada. Uh exactly. what's the best place to eat by you? Ooh, um, it depends. Well, there's so there's a place called Triple O's, and it's like a, it's I'm trying to like compare it to something in america it's it their burgers Stop. canada is not that foreign <laughs> yeah yeah no but like they don't have it in america so I'm, it's not like in and out it's like not as good as in and out it's not as good as like um what's what's the like east coast version of in and out oh fuck like, i don't know the, i don't think we have one honestly we really don't like uh, white cats okay. is it like a five guys out? level shit it's like five, it's kind of it's kind of five guys yeah so triple o's is kind of the like go to like they make a really good burger and it's fast and you just what's your order i get a i just get like a cheeseburger like our bacon cheeseburger with uh sweet potato fries and then chipotle chipotle sauce or whatever mayo chipotle mayo to dip it in chipotle mayo okay it's yeah it's fire that's the 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 spicy from la just traveled oh, yeah. with you uh yeah. first horror movie you watched or plan to watch this october Ooh. oh man oh what is uh talk to me Yes. yes yes oh dude we just watched that that was so good it was yes. fucking so good. right absolutely amazing did have to have subtitles on because the australian accent is wild so it's a yeah. little strange right <laughs> i was like okay we gotta put subtitles i had like there's i'm missing shit here like they're just you know but it was yeah it was awesome it's it was like crazy. rural australia like like it feels all even more authentic to me no for sure yeah it was it was very dope but like it was very hyped and I was actually like watching it with the lens of like, is this overhyped, you know? So, which kind of sucks. Cause I hate, I like to just watch movies and not, you know, hear other people's opinions yet. except for like, yeah, it's, you should watch this. Okay, cool. But it was like, this is the best horror movie ever. Like people were like hyping it, but it was, it was good. It was good. Right. Yeah. Like maybe not bad, but maybe, probably the best I've seen this year to be fair. Yeah. This year for sure. Yeah. It was dope. Um, oh man. There's another one. It was very fucked up. I had to have to ask. Uh, I can't remember. Shit, describe it to me. I'm going to get it. Give it to me. Oh, dude. What happens? It, Give me the worst thing that happens. There's a the, a kid at the end gets her tongue cut out and kidnapped. Speak no evil. Yes. Dude. <laughs> fucking insane movie. It's like, I watched it like six months ago. Also, I spoiler. Fucking died. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> I love that you fucking nailed it. Cause I was, I was like going to hate myself. Bro, I like, think about this movie all the time. It's, dude, it's so fucked up. Oh, dude. It, on, it, on the record. Yeah. Didn't fuck with that movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> dude. Well, I, I mean, it ha I don't know if it has probably a little bit to do with like fact that like I have a kid. So you're, I'm watching it like, if I'm the dad and the dad was such a fucking bitch, dude, like <laughs> I was like, do something, like do something, man. Come on. Like I went, like we went to bed, like, like mad and like grossed <laughs> out and bummed out. And like, that's when you, that's when a movie's good. I think is when it, mm -hmm. like, obviously when it makes you feel something. And I was like, who the fuck would make this movie? Like, I was like, who the fuck thinks of this and then goes and makes it. 
They had like 40 so opportunities funny. to do something, by the way. So it's just like a <laughs> fucking domino effect of like, please God. Like how like, many signs do you need? Yeah, I mean, we're we're so, I guess we're so accustomed to like heroes in movies and, and things, uh, you know, taking like a positive turn or, or you know, some, you, you take away something from it and be like, you know what, I learned something nothing like it was just all bad it was all hopeless fun. yeah ho- were, were you <laughs> equally as mad when they hit that kangaroo and talked to me uh yeah. like like flashbacks to when bless the fall hit up australia yeah. <laughs> <Sanctuaries>. <laughs> yeah. kangaroos are so like they just they're not bothering anyone they're chilling like I, we visited like there's a kangaroo park out there in brisbane and we've gone there three or four times and every time it's like you could just lay with the kangaroo. You just lay down next to one. As long as you don't like try to contr- like hold it. Like if right, you like hold choke it, it out. Like, yeah, yeah. But I've done it. I like, I have photos of me like laying next to one and I put my arm and it's like, no. And it gets no. fucking weird about it. I'm like, all right. We're good. Australian bands give you shit when you uh, go visit the kangaroos every time you go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the last time we were there, I turned down a trip because I'd gone so many times to see the kangaroos that I stayed in my hotel to watch the Lakers play. Like, I was like, you know what? I've seen the th- I've seen the thing. I've held the koala multiple times. We have like several photos. Is and- there someone in the band who's still like every time you guys touch ground, like we got to go? We yeah, got to Elliot, go. Elliot's got to hug the koala. Really? <laughs> Jesus. That's his that's his whole vibe. Dude. He just loves creatures and and love. OK, yeah. OK. I mean, it's not the worst vibe to have. Uh, yeah. How are the Lakers prospects looking this season? Mm. You know, what's <laughs> funny is that, like, I've been paying so much attention to hockey. I, I am paying attention to the Lakers, but um, Rui Hachimura, I don't, do you watch basketball as well? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. um, he's awesome. And and they got a few they got a few uh, players from that trade uh, that are going to be like badass. So I'm I'm very so uh, Jackson Hayes is another yeah. one. Um, At this point, are you more yeah. like hockey than basketball? You know what? <sighs> kind of. Yeah. Like, and like my kid plays hockey. So I'm like super dialed in the like her stuff. So I haven't been able to like geek out like I usually do where I'm like following all the preseason stuff. And like, you know, I've been watching the the Kings play preseason. The Kings went to Australia first team or first like NHL game in the Southern hemisphere, which is pretty wild. Um, they play preseason down there. So yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit, a little bit more hockey than basketball, but I think the Lakers uh, are going to be, are going to be i'm not worried we will say like, yeah they're going to be badass yeah we're, we're new england so remember this is celtics ground here oh i know oh i know <laughs> um me. yeah <laughs> you do you do you still play basketball or are you more hockey now in terms of like yourself too M- more hockey like i had a game last night and um it's just because i have to kind of there's so much hockey now and i've kind of like I got my, my, my roots are here now and I've met a lot of really good hockey players. So I get invited out to go play for a bunch of different teams and uh, I could play probably three or four times a week if I wanted to. So there's not really time to like go play basketball and it rains a lot here. So you got to find indoor places to play, okay, but okay. Uh, I definitely want to get back to it this year for sure. I just like something, something that's so quintessential bless the fall to me is you guys like posting a picture of shooting ball, like before your show. Yeah. That night. <laughs> that's true. Dude. I, I mean, like in Europe, I, I bought a basketball in France, like day two. And I just went, I made it like my mission every day. I would, I would be on like Google maps the night before and find a basketball court near the venue. And then I would just go play or shoot around or whatever. This and lines then- up. Yeah. So like, I was definitely like obsessed for a while. And like, that's just funny you mentioned that. Cause I was like me trying some trick shot and like we were on tour with Chiodos and their merch. It's literally were- exactly <laughs> what I remember too. It's like you and that badge. Yeah. 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 Me and Craig would, would go at it. Then me and Telly had a lot of, uh, from word alive had a lot of one-on-one battles. He never really won that much, but you know, <laughs> it was, uh, he, he's a good, he's a good player. Yeah. He's a good sure. Player. Yeah. Um, yeah. do you play hockey with anybody in bands too? Um, let me think. Um, not really like, uh, on this last tour, um, Tony from dragged under actually, he plays hockey and we were talking about, cause he lives in Washington, so it's not super far. Um, and we were just talking about meeting up to go play. So yeah, like, uh, Paul Mark from, um, from silver scene, we, we played on warp tour a bunch and like Chris dose from anti flag, like we would go play a bunch. So, uh, yeah, we had a little crew 
for a little, for a while that that would just go play randomly. We'd find again, we'd find like pickup games or whatever, and then um, yeah, just okay. it's a little harder on tour be, with, with hockey because you got to bring all your gear, right? Yeah, That's I fucking bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring the ball, and like I deflated the ball and brought it home, you know, like from France. So it's like it's easy. It's easy to travel. You don't have to carry these like these knives, these boots with knives on them everywhere you go. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess you could do like street hockey too, but I don't know if that's yeah, like equally that's difficult or. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Street hockey is cool. Actually funny story. Ronnie from uh, falling in reverse brought one year on warp tour. He had bought, he bought all these hockey sticks and hockey nets and goalie equipment two two sets. And he got like ball hockey, like street ball hockey going in the parking lots. Okay, this is fun. I, I remember like walking by, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is Ronnie where the like, fuck's my invitation? Hockey right now? And I, I went over, I'm like, yo, what, what, what the fuck? And he's like, you want to play, bro? I'm like, uh, yeah. And then I just you know, <laughs> go out there and kind of, you know, dominate a little bit. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was fun. No, but he, like, kudos to him. Like, I remember that year, he bought all this stuff and he just, like, he fell in love with, with road hockey. So it was, it was pretty fun. That's yeah. fucking fun. That's the community of Warped Tour, though. It does kind of ruin this idea that I had that everything was very serious on Warped Tour and you guys were all business all the time. So, exact opposite. Come on, man. You show up to Warped Tour <laughs> yeah. next year. With like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got me. But... Uh, last vacation you took? Oh, uh, probably to um, Orlando. It was a uh, it was a vacation slash hockey camp for for the kids. Bro, you're in fucking deep. Yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, she Rocket made like a rep team this year. So oh, for Rocket, not for you. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. It was okay. for the kid, but I it was so it's called O Town Hockey. It's in Orlando, and I actually I filmed all their content for them. But they do um, they work with Universal Studios. So it's, it's marketed as a family vacation slash hockey camp. So you go and you get a three-day pass to Universal Studios, and then you, you get the hockey camp. So you play okay. hockey in the morning, and then you go to Universal Studios or the water park all night. So we it had sounds this really like an awesome cool day, show. yeah. Oh, it was so fun. She had such a blast. Like She's like, are we going next year? I'm like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so bro, stop her. You probably had a blast too. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did. Trust me. We, uh, we rode, yeah, every ride possible, but it was crazy about Orlando again, like Florida, these thunderstorms would just come fucking flying through and they'd shut all the rides down. So like, we'd be like running around and they're like, everyone, please, uh, take cover. Like there's like a tornado like, warning type deal. Kind of, but for like these, these thunderstorms, I've because the lightning anything. could, could fuck up, you know, the roller coaster could hit, you know, it's obviously they're just like giant conductors um so everyone would like would like get indoors or just take cover or like a lot of people bought like the full body like ponchos you know like the plastic suits and smart the, thinking ahead yeah the thunderstorms would just like smash the water park for like 15 minutes and then it'd be gone and then it's like back to normal everyone's back out again Dude, what an insane way to live uh, it's, fun I place to that's all i was thinking i'm like people live here like this is crazy no nah, yeah, fuck that uh lot. just a couple more here what's your current starbucks order Grande, cold, grande or venti cold brew, two pumps of liquid cane, light splash of oat milk. That's liquid specific. cane. So you like it sweet, yeah. but you don't like a flavor. No, I just like it. And like liquid, it, liquid cane's like four grams of sugar per pump, right? So you're not, I'm not getting much. And so if I get a big one, I'll get two pumps. If I get smaller, one, I get one pump. And yeah, I've kind of dialed it down. Like when I first started going to Starbucks, it was like vanilla, uh, white chocolate mocha, and then I got Levi from Miss May I addicted to white chocolate. To this day, he's like, <laughs> sends me photos. Fuck you. Like, I still get it. Is this like, like bang over tour era? He bang over tour. Yeah. And then yeah. like when we went out with Of Mice and Men, when Austin Carlisle was still in the band, same thing. I was like, bro, you got to try this, man. And he was like addicted to it. The whole tour, everyone had these like white chocolate mochas. It's got like 500 grams of sugar. And like, this is the worst thing you could have. I love that you got everybody but, else addicted, but then you just weed yourself off of it. And then I was like, <laughs> peace later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also Dude. like 10 of you walking into that starbucks with the most complicated thing to make yeah i know have you like... seen that dunkin donut strength that's just like 12 munchkins like in a milkshake no yeah that's yeah, yeah, yeah. like 200 grams of sugar it's insane oh of course duncan would come up with some they're like yeah that's, exactly that's, it's exactly that's it. wild yeah uh but final get to know you question uh do you have any parenting tips for our listeners with children 
<laughs> oh man, I'm the wrong person to ask. I let my what do you mean the wrong person? You sound like a great dad. You're taking your kid to Florida every year. It's fun. You know what? Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, be. I guess like, what's what's a good tip? Uh, honestly, like they don't. They're not young forever, man. It happens so quick. And and everyone told me that, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But literally, it felt like Rocket was two yesterday. So now she's nine, and I'm like holy shit like singing on bless the fall albums yeah (laughs) she was like four when she did that which is crazy (laughs) but um yeah man just i guess just enjoy every single moment and and just even the the tough the hard ones because there's some times where i'm like super frustrated or whatever and you just gotta like enjoy those little moments and uh, because they don't last forever so uh, I, I can assume that you have not taken for granted the fact that you've pretty much been at home for like the last three years, as opposed oh, to awesome. your lifestyle before. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been great. And that's when Rocket got into hockey and stuff, which is really cool. So I got to like take her out on the ice, like four times a week and, you know, we homeschool her. So we have all that extra time during the day. And um, yeah, she started playing like a couple of years ago and then she started playing with all girls and then she kind of like got pretty good. So I brought her to play with boys. And uh, this year she made a rep team. So the rep team, there's like a, a house team. Everyone makes the house team, right? Like it's just, if you want to play hockey, you make the house team. And right. then there's like a rep team, which is like, you got to be a little bit better. You know, you got to be dialed in. So she made that team and uh, unfortunately broke her collarbone in tryouts. Jesus. Um, Jeez. This yeah. recently? Yeah, it was three weeks ago. So she's Ooh. she's halfway to, to being healed up, but she's a monster man like she's kind of back to normal running around but it's still kind of dangerous because it's like it's still like you know not fully formed Um, did she get like checked too hard or something like what happened yeah yeah kid hit hit her and then actually fell on her and i think the Uh. weight fall and it only takes like 50 pounds of pressure to break a collarbone apparently i hear so yeah it was uh yeah i had about i bought her bigger shoulder pads for when she comes back (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, yeah she's a monster though dude it's crazy like she she's got so, she's getting so good and yeah they just started a pro league for women so it's like mm-hmm. six teams on the east coast and so now she has something to sort of like strive for you know what i mean right that's the goal or yeah and, and is the way she got into hockey was just funny like i would take her skating every now and then not like the winter time would come and we'd be like oh let's go ice skate and do go two times three times And then I was watching hockey one time and she's like, dad, how come only boys play basketball and hockey? And I'm like, and it's just funny. Cause like, I was taken aback. Like she noticed, like, it's just weird that she noticed. Right. That like, it's funny, but then also like sad at the same time. I know what you mean. (laughs) I know. I was like, Oh shit. And I turned it off and put YouTube on and I put the, the female hockey on like team Canada, team USA, like these badass girls who are fucking so good at hockey and they got their ponytails and they're like doing their sellies. And, and so she was like, I want to do that. Like I literally showed it to her for like five minutes. She goes, I want to do that. I'm like, it's crazy how inspiring something so trivial is. And and that's what like a lot of people don't understand that. Like, um, you know, they're saying like, they don't need to be paid as much as the dudes. Cause I understand like the guys are here and it's like the market's a lot bigger, but they need the representation. Like kid, the little girls need to see it to believe they can do it it's and that's all it took literally five minutes of youtube showing the girls and she went i want to play and i was like let's fucking go we left we went to the hockey shop i bought that's a gear awesome. that day i was like let's <laughs> go i'll find somewhere i started googling like female hockey like blah 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 you know and, and found her a team and and yeah so it's it's it's, it's it's i mean it's crazy in a sense because it's also like great that your kid immediately gets into something that's also like one of your hobbies and something you enjoy same yeah, reaction yeah. if she started watching like a pug video was like yeah i want to do that <laughs> <laughs> so true but yeah it, it, it's cool like at her age right now too because she came out to the last time she saw bless the fall play she was like four she doesn't remember it. I'm like, Hey, do you remember the show? She's like, no, I'm like, okay. Cause I remember looking over and she was jumping around and dancing. She doesn't remember it. So on the you know the first day of this tour, she came out and her mind was blown and she was like <laughs> screaming and yelling and laughing. dad's wearing a hat. She was like, dad's got a hat on. What the fuck's <laughs> going on out here? But uh, yeah, so it's this cool. It's a really cool age right now for her. She, yeah. That's good. That's good to hear. Good yeah. All right. All right. So Bless the Fall famously tweeted BRB on January 9th, 2020, and then proceeded to vanish into thin air for three years. What what happened, man? Where did you go? Why did you come back? 
Yeah, it was our Houdini, our Houdini uh, era. This was pre-COVID too, so it's not like you had like a really solid excuse. It just sort of manifested <laughs> itself for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was man. I wish we had a plan. Uh, we had no plan. It was like we basically were like we knew it was time to take a little time off. Um, right after that tour, you know, we just tore ourselves into the ground. You know, you oversaturate the market. I know that word is kind of commonly used, but it's true. Like we just, you know. People were like, oh, I'll come see you in, you know, two months when you're back in New York, you know? So the shows got smaller. We're like, people just knew we would come back, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you know, we were just spreading our th ourselves thin, kind of had the family going on and stuff. So we were going to take a little break. COVID happened. And then we're like, everyone kind of enjoyed being home. We're like, <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> Here we are. Would you say it was, it was a, obviously all the negative side effects of the pandemic aside, would you say it was like a net benefit that COVID kind of happened? Like, do you think you would have come back sooner or it sort of like extended it for you? Yeah. You know what? It, it probably did extend it a little bit. Um, we, we were going to take, I think we were going to take a substantial amount of time away, but I, I definitely think it extended it probably a little bit more than it, than it would have. Um, you know, it was almost four years, you know, it was four years like this month or last month, which is crazy since our last show, right? Before this tour. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't like we were like, here's the master plan. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But it started to turn turn into that when like, you know, Eric became a freaking real estate agent and then like took less to fall out of his bio, you know? And then people started to notice. So I was like, I'm going to do it too. Like, it, it's kind of <laughs> funny. So then like I did it. And then I was like, you know, you look on Reddit and it's like, you know, oh, you know, two of the members, you know, and then they Funny got- Funny for you, know, you Bo. What worst fucking yeah. week in my life? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was like, okay, let if we're going to do this, like, you know, let's just do this. So then, like, you know, let's just do our own thing. And if people miss us, we'll come back. And, you know, then we started kind of, Eric sent over a couple demos and I'm like, damn, these kind of rip, dude. Like, this is sweet, you know, like- all right, I'll, I'll try to find time to do vocals. And I would go up to like our studio and it was like horrendous. I was like, dude, I don't think I can be a singer anymore. This is so bad. Like, Wait, what do you mean? Just like being out of your element, not feeling it? Yeah, it just, it just, I sounded really bad, but like any lyrics I came up with were really bad. I was just like, this is so, I don't know, man. I'm like, I think like, maybe I just, I should give it up because this is- but, well, What the fuck then? What changed? Um, I think just, you know, just practice, honestly, like just getting back in that headspace and then wanting to do it, you know, became like, fuck, I really want to do this now. Like I, I need to like put the work in, I need to get all the bad, I need to flush out all the bad ideas. And, um, it's like that with every album though. It starts off really bad. Like at least for me, like the guys are fucking like Eric's an amazing uh, musician. Elliot's an amazing musician. Jared can scream like no other. And it's just for me, like <clears throat> having lyrics and that's my washer having like, <laughs> just doing laundry guys, you know, rockstar shit. There's no big deal. Um, but uh, yeah, just having like, you know, trying to put my, myself back in a place where, um, you know, where I could really feel something. I, did, I didn't want to just kind of write surface level stuff. I wanted to feel something. And oftentimes I have to go to a dark place to do that. So it took a while. And then like we started writing and recording with Hiram Hernandez. And then um, um, he's been awesome. We, we're doing all the instrumentals with him and then some vocals with him. And then um, Wake Leo, the Dead. Are you, you're talking about a new album right now? No, we're just saying like for like Wake the Dead, like all the stuff we did. Okay, was, okay, okay, okay. Him. Working him. on like Eric's demos, all that. Yeah, we took like him and him, Eric and Hiram wrote in a room and then sent stuff. And then me and I went in with Tyler Smith and then he kind of rearranged some of the drums and like just Tylerized it. Like he just has this like touch where he can just Smith like, was all of hard feelings, right? Yeah. Yeah. He did all the hard feelings. That was kind of his, well, falling in reverse right before, uh, before hard feelings and then us. And then now is like his gateway into like, he's just crushing it now. Like the, right. the dude does a record with a band and they get played on the radio. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, wild. it's crazy how much he's yeah. grown in like, and then looking back and thinking like D danger kids and stuff where he's, I know. it's insane. Yeah, and he was in Let's Get It before that. I don't, do you guys remember oh, I Let's Get It? Familiar with that? No. Oh, dude, you got to jam some Let's Get It. It's so good. Is it good? Yeah. yeah, it's like it's so fun. It's kind of pop pop rock, but he he was in Let's Get It, and we we liked them so much. They were on Fearless Records that we made Bob Fearless. We're like, we want to bring that band on tour. Like, 
let like whatever it takes. So we'll open the show. Like they were on so- Fearless as Let's Get It. Yeah, yeah, they were on Fearless. Oh, I don't know and how so- I fucking missed this completely. Yeah, I sang on a song on one of their songs or whatever. So uh, oh, now yeah. I'm fucked up. Yeah. You gotta go, go deep dive. Go deep dive. I haven't Apparently. heard that song in years, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, they were. Let's get it. We love them. And then Tyler obviously was just like an absolute beauty. So we like. I just always kept in touch with him, and then followed all the stuff he did. And you know, when we did our records with Joey, they were Joey was like, "Dude, Tyler's getting really good at producing." Blah, blah, blah. that was like, you know, his protege. Um, was he like so, sweating a little yeah. bit when he said that? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joey was like already on to like bigger and better ventures. He was like, when we, when he was doing our record, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to do bands anymore, man. It's kind of like, I'm making more money doing other stuff. And, um, he's like, but I'll always do bless the fall, man. Like if you guys ever need anything, I'll, I'll do it, but I'm not. And then he, he picked like a couple bands. He was like, you guys asking um and like Conquer divide. Conquer divide. yeah 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 so, uh, yeah of course that's a yeah that's a given it's like yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> but uh, did you think for a moment about calling up joey sturgis again like did it ever sit in the back of your mind like yeah definitely yeah just call it sure. a favor for sure but you know not taking anything away from joey tyler just has um this he's much of- better yeah, yeah yeah no we get it bo <laughs> <laughs> he's just like he's surpassed so them in every way. Yo, know, I man, if no Joey, like heart, like Hollow Bodies would not have been what it was. Like he, I think he took it personally, and we did for that record where we were like, we gotta fucking come out hot, dude. Like there's no filler. Like no, there's never a record where you want to put a filler song on it. But every now and then, there's like a Bones crew that sneaks in. And you're like, oh, okay, it's gonna be on the other one, I guess. And then, yo. <laughs> There's like a, you know, there's one, one of my favorite songs. Like, okay, I will say this: if Bones Crew got re-recorded today, it would sound a lot better. There's Do a lot. It. I would, Nothing I would stopping you. Yeah, yeah. It may, you know what? We we started messing around with the idea of like a like a like a greatest hits like reimagined kind of like just like redoing a bunch of songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, bless and, the fall version. Yeah, yeah, like a bless the fall version of stuff. So you never know. There's you know nothing's off the table. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, was it as hard for you to get back into like the performing touring aspect of it? Yeah, it was, um, it felt so just being completely transparent. It felt so fucking weird. The, right before I went on stage for the first show, I actually just going back to the rehearsal studio and like pu- putting my in-ears in and like just doing the things I used to do. I was like, this feels fucking crazy. Like it feels and then like you know fast forward to like the first show i'm standing backstage and it felt honestly it felt like imposter syndrome like i'm gonna go pretend i'm a singer now like (laughs) like i'm gonna go be a singer here we go you know like time to go do this this thing that i used to do and how do you get over that just like a few shows in it comes back to yeah it's all took yeah it took that first show it was like you know sold out in advance which is so cool and that just kind of we all were like very humbled by it we're like dude, this is wild. Like, I don't know what the cap is at that venue, but it was, there was a lot of people there and <clears throat> family was there and, you know, lots of friends and, you know, you're just like backstage, you know, you're ready to go on and like the countdown starting and I'm just like holding the mic, like, okay. Like, this is I hope I, I hope I remember what to do when I get out, out there. Cause there was like, you know, you get in a routine and there's things you say on stage and, you know, there's motions that you do that, you know, you just get used to, right? So it had all kind of come back, but that first show was like, I remember literally feeling like I was acting. I was like, dude, this is fucking weird. And then- Sold out too, so the fucking pressure's on. Oh Um, yeah, it was like, yeah, packed house, you know, no big deal. Same thing with uh, filming the music video? Definitely, yeah. Filming the music video, it was for sure. Like, cause I've been like shooting a lot of stuff. So now I'm like on the other side of the camera again. Did you direct? that music video no daniel davidson did um but i would love to actually like we were, i was talking to the boys about it i was like dude i have so many like every every music video i have something to do with it and then um i have some some sort of like i'll have like a you know a concept or whatever or some ideas and i work with the director um uh, for this one daniel kind of just took the reins and we just listened to him we're like yeah whatever you need man like we're just gonna show up and rock out so it was like let's rock out. Let's see if we remember how to like even move. And, you know, just the motions felt, um, just felt kind of clunky at first. Yeah. I remember I the first like take, we all stopped and they're like, all right, cut. And I was like, I'm like, <laughs> dizzy. 
my head hurts already from head bang. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta take this big coat off. They're like, yeah, lose the coat. I had this like giant coat thing that I bought. I'm like, I, this, this has to go. Like, I'm going to like, all right. This feels like a warning it. for why you shouldn't take three years off as a band. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, even like as a tour, let, we led up to the tour. I was just, you know, before we started rehearsals, I was just singing in my car. I was like, I just got to sing and just get my, that muscle built back up again. You know, it'd be like lifting weights or whatever. Like um, if I just like, didn't do that, I probably wouldn't have been ready. But as the tour went on, like, man, I felt great. I felt great on stage. Like I felt like my voice felt better than it ever had. And even the boys, like we always give each other a hard time. Like we're always like, oh, you fucked that note up or like, you know, we're joking around. <laughs> and after the dude, Jared would be like, dude, you sound really fucking good tonight. I'm like, okay. And like, <laughs> same thing. Eric was like, dude, and you know, and buried in these walls, man, like you fucking smashed it, dude. You sound really good. I'm like, this is weird. Are you guys fucking with? I was like, <laughs> where's the joke? You know? And they're like, no, dude, like you sound awesome. I'm like, thanks man. Like, I appreciate that. That's because I'm more, I've always been known more of like just a showman, you know, like I'm hanging off shit or running around or jumping in the crowd. And I think I wanted to make sure I sounded good. And, um, as the crowd gets older and they're all the phones are out, you know, there's 150 phones up and every, you know, it's like, this is going to go on the internet tonight. And so I just better sound good. So is uh, that, did that feel like the biggest change for you from like when you last performed to like when you performed four years, like, like the, the, the time lapse, was that the only thing you really noticed that was like different about shows? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Like people were already like getting their, their phones out a bunch. I remember like, I remember the period of when, bands would be mad if people had their phones out i remember like dudes from ita were like kicking the phone or like <laughs> or like kicking the phone out of that kid's hand or mm -hmm. something like that i remember doing it i remember like taking someone's phone away and putting it on the guitar cap <laughs> the whole show and then i'd like i was like here you go after the right, show, their I'm time out yeah straight up <laughs> and now it's just like it's just part of it and you know that like it can be beneficial because like you know okay we get put on tiktok or whoever and instagram and people can watch and maybe even find out about your band just from someone else's video so i'm um, just so like it is what it is and for the most part like people were were just in the moment and then um you know there'd be like for the slower songs you see a lot more phones out because everyone's just chilling so yeah that checks cool. out but were you on tiktok uh officially i am on tiktok <laughs> Yeah, it's it's there. I wanted to start dads of TikTok, the hashtag, you know, <laughs> like, and just do a bunch of dad shit on there, like cringy dad stuff. And then I I gave up on that. That it was an idea I had like laying in bed at like two a.m. I'm like that'd be pretty funny. And then like never <laughs> followed through with it. Um, yeah. I saw former member uh, drummer Matt Trainer join the band on stage for a performance. I think it was Hey Baby. He he joined you guys with uh for that. Uh, yeah. on the final dates of the hollow bodies tenure tour. Um, how special is that moment for the band? And do you guys speak to Matt often? Yeah. Yeah. We keep in touch. I'm, I'm like always sending him funny videos on Instagram and vice versa. And then we got like, we still have a, like our gr a group chat, like we're randomly, we'll, we'll talk about random stuff and, you know, I'll just, you know, we'll be like, yo, did you see this thing or something and laugh about stuff? He's oh, yeah. He's, he's a great dude, man. Like he's, we try to get them on the tour <laughs> like, <laughs> originally we're like come because they all came out to see lights play in a, few, a couple of years back in arizona and we had the whole band there for the first time in like fucking years so we had like a photo of all of us and everyone's like what the fuck like <laughs> we're like no we're just you know hanging out but um you know he's just one of the boys and 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 you know we get along so well and he's just he has two kids he's a mailman like full-time you know which is wild the fuck? why is that yeah. weirdly the second time someone in this scene has done that <laughs> really is that someone yeah, else it was, uh, I think it was the drummer was it the drummer for a skylight yeah. yeah yeah oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. cory yeah he's a mailman yeah. he probably saw matt do it because they're buddies he probably was like oh, <laughs> in the mail game you know like oh kill, what a, uh, but the benefits are sick you get paid really well and it's like you, you know, you, you, I guess you're kind of on the road, you know, you're just, you're just, it feels like you you're get medical. Back. I get it. Uh, but uh, yeah. So we, I was like, yo man, you should do the tour. And then he's like, I can't, I can't take that much time off. He's like, I probably wouldn't remember how to play drums anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, before the tour started, we're like, yo, like you want to come play a song in, in Phoenix? He's like, yeah, for sure. So he practiced, Hey baby, for the whole like month and a half, you know, and then, <laughs> 
Um, like his kids have never seen him play play drums before and stuff like that so uh, he came out to sound check and he kind of flubbed the first take and he was like all right let's try it again (laughs) like just being up there and like you know it's 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 the biggest it was the biggest home show we've ever had the biggest turnout we've ever had um which is so fucking cool like it was just so special and the venue was was massive for us you know (laughs) and like we, we rented these like smoke things to like make it look cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like we never go all out with like production, but on that, that tour we did, we're like, all right, let's like, let's make it look fucking really good. And was that, was that LA or Arizona? Uh, Arizona. Yeah. Arizona. So the whole band's from Arizona. Well, Elliot's from Ohio. He's a transplant, but <laughs> so we call Arizona the, our home show. But That's what I thought. I just, I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. LA and Anaheim's like my home show, but for the whole band, it's Arizona. And um, yeah, it was the biggest headliner that we've ever, we've ever had. And um, it was, yeah, it was really cool to see just people care, you know, it was, <laughs> it's, it was... well, I mean, so well, a part of this is like at the beginning, you were like, okay, you know, we got to take some time off so that people kind of miss us. And they kind of start coming out to shows again. Do you it finish worked. this tour and think to yourself okay in order for us to go on tour again do we continue to play this same game where we have to allow a certain time lapse yeah i was gonna i was gonna tell i was gonna tweet brb again and then (laughs) (laughs) it might be too soon um it's true man like uh and, and now everyone's back on the road and everyone's back so it's like turning into sort of what happened when we left where it was like fucking there's a you know you you Are you saying go, like it's too much competition? Just yeah, oversaturation. So you go and you can see, you know, um, escape to fate and drugs and blah 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 and blah blah blah. And then you can th- three days later you can see bad omens and like the word alive and blah blah. And then you you know it's like all these packages are are, are going back out together and um, which is great for the industry, great for music, but you know it takes a little bit away from. From, it spreads it spreads the fan base thin so unless you're like the you know bring me the horizons of the world and stuff like that you're gonna have to just like take a little bit of a hit because people don't have money to go see fucking you know five bands a week you know five shows a week kind of thing yeah, true so, true did you get a lot of offers in your downtime uh we did yeah so the offers started coming in like and we had to turn them down and we were like yeah man we're not active and then um and then we started talking about like coming back and, and Blue Ridge actually was one of them originally. And they, they came, we're like, no, they wanted us to have our reunion show at Blue Ridge. And we're like, right. It's no. kind of their thing. Yeah. We're like, we're not wasting our reunion on not wasting. I don't want to say wasting, but we're not going to. Well, know. after, after how that weekend went, maybe, yeah. but dude, so- it would have been so sick, dude. Like Blue Ridge would have been so sick uh, if the chaos didn't ensue, honestly, like, it was fucking huge. And the bands that played that we saw, like we watched Alpha Wolf play a couple bands before us. So we were supposed to go on and the crowd was fucking awesome. And I'm like, I was getting, I was like, oh, I cannot wait to play. Like I got. Wow. So, so what, did, what did they call it? Like right before you stepped on stage? It was right before Escape the Fate. Escape the Fate walked on stage and it was raining. And I remember Craig was like, dude, I was stoked because there was some rain. It was cooling off the crowd. And then it just went like, <laughs> it just turned and all the crowd like ran and then the band ran off stage and all people's shit got ruined, which was really fucking sad. Like escape to fate. So soundboard got toast immediately. It was like, it blew the walls off the front of house tent, just roasted there. Luckily, like our guys were fast enough to cover all of our, la- like our laptops and like soundboards and guitars and shit like that. But um, a lot of bands had their shit just completely fucking toasted and hopefully they have insurance, but yeah, it was like, so that happened, right? So they uh, we're like in our trailer and I'm like watching this crazy storm. I'm like, holy shit. This is like, there's no way people are going to be able to play after this, you know? And then it, it stopped. And then they were like, okay, we're going to see what the damage is. And then I had, I had friends that were in the crowd and that were camping and they're like, they're telling people to leave. I'm like, what? I'm like, the festival is telling us like we might be able to play still like the rain's gone, you know? And then as we're talking about it, hail. Now the hail starts. The hail storm. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Just and now hail's gnarly, you know? Like it's just it's smacking you. Like it doesn't feel it's not like it's a different kind of yeah, uh, crowd's weapon. not having fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the, and the crowd's like has now like gone. Like they're all they've all taken shelter. They're basically like 
there's these huge LED screens at all the stages. And the screen said, take shelter. Like this is dangerous weather. And, and, you know, take, I'm you fucking know, apocalyptic shit, kind of thing. yeah. So it's not Blue Ridge's fault, man. Like, you know, it's, they, they tried their best and they really wanted like to get the, to keep the show going that night, but it's just, it wasn't possible. And then security was telling people to leave. And I'm like, if they're telling people to leave, like we're, we're not going on stage. I'm not playing to nobody. Like that's weird. Did you, so, did you ever have a warp tour that was even nearly as bad as that? Um, the, the closest thing was like Tampa and, um, we were about to go on stage or it was like 10 minutes to stage. And, uh, I was about to, Bro, you the- about to go on stage is like the worst open about, I know <laughs> <laughs> we were about to go on and then the apocalypse happened. But, uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, we were like probably like 10, 15 minutes from, from our set time. And I was on the bus. I was about to head over to the stage again, thunderstorm, like boom, like huge thunderstorm, like sideways wind. They made everyone go to the amphitheater. So luckily Warp Store had the amphitheaters and, and places for people to kind of go and hide. And worst case scenario, the show happens in the amphitheater, you know, like a bunch of bands probably get cut, but bands can still play. Um, so they hit everyone in the amphitheater and then they're like, okay, like everyone holds, you know, wait for like our, our, our signal kind of thing. Like we'll figure out whether we can go or not. The, by the way, the, it's like everything's flooded. Like I opened the bus door, the, the water's up to the first step in the bus. I'm like, what the, f-? so I, I, I basically was like, all right, I'm going on in shorts. I wore like booty shorts, no shirt, no socks, no shit, no nothing. And uh, when they said go, I like got on my bike and like ripped over to the stage. <laughs> and like, it's just what an absolute circus. And then they let everyone out of the amphitheater. And then we started, we basically started playing it everyone went like flooded right to our stage and it was like fucking chaos like it was the sickest show people like lost their minds like and it was cool because it was like everyone was there because they just kind of got let out we were the first band to make noise it was almost like a small gift right oh it was a yeah definitely a gift but it was like something that was like terrible turned into something good but yeah that was probably the closest thing to where like um there was lightning um i know like lightning hit like one of the tents which is wild. I think like the acoustic tent and one of the, someone was holding it and like indirectly got hit by lightning and he had to go to the hospital. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a guy that ran the the acoustic tent. I can't remember his name. Do you remember the acoustic tent? Yeah. What it was called? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, he, he he ended up being okay, but yeah, it's uh Warped always kind of what they just had that luck. It was like that warp tour luck where they could kind of Is it? Because I feel like in the back of my head it was like a uh anything goes mentality at the same time where it's like, okay. So being from Arizona, I feel yeah. like a couple hundred and ten degree shows were like just in the cards every year. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And Vegas, Vegas was like, I, I remember, I'll never forget this. It was like tattooed in my mind of huge lineup of ambulances wrapped around the outside of the venue. Just, like prepared like, for that shit. Like taking people away, like they were taxis. It looked like you know when you go out and wait for the like the, the queue of taxis at the airport that's like going around. It was like they were just throwing people in, and then the ambulance would leave. Next one would pull up, <laughs> throw people, Christ. and it was just going. And we went on last that day, and I'm like, no one's gonna be left. That's right, watch. there ain't people left alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, on Twitter, your bio reads John Wick of metalcore. What do you mean by that? His dog died. He just hasn't <laughs> told us yet. Well, right before that, it was I was the Justin Bieber of metalcore. If you noticed that, so I just oh, kind of yeah, like, yeah, I just sort of, I just make stuff up. It has nothing to do with anything. Stop, <laughs> stop. They can't not yeah. have anything to do with anything. Did you watch the movie and it really inspired you that day? A little bit, yeah. And uh-huh. so the I think the Bieber one was because we I did that cover with my buddy and I did Bieber's part vocal part mm. and actually no it was. It was this dude. Oh man, this guy. Um, I think his name's uh, Dallas. This is this dude I ran into. He's a huge fan of Blessed Fall, and he actually said, "You're like the Justin Bieber of metalcore." And I remember going like, "That's so fucking funny." I don't know why that's so funny. To <laughs> yeah, me. how do you take that? <laughs> just me. I was just like, "I'm putting," and then I went and put it on, and that maybe it was because of that song. But he he said it something like that, and I I thought it was just like to me this you know maybe no one else thought it was funny but i was like Dude, nobody what? called you the john wick of metalcore though you just sort of manifested that yeah i just i think it was because i had the black suit on in the in the music okay. video right. and i had you know i had like all black and then i was like you know tightened up and i was like yeah i feel like 
kind of feel like John Wick right now. So like on that same note, uh, you set yourself on fire for the You Wear a Crown video. Yeah. I was going to ask what other Tom Cruise level stunts you're willing to commit in future vids, but I guess Man. John Wick level stunts, maybe? Dude, that'd be sick. I mean, Ronnie kind of already did the like martial arts thing in one of his videos where he like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I took that, but you know what? Maybe um, I could like challenge him to like a fight in a video or something. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> then go do like a whole like, you know, a month and a half of like jujitsu and like Muay Thai training and right. You don't want to fake it. People could tell. I feel you. No, I know. I don't want to stunt double man. He, yeah. So. <laughs> that would be sick though. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be fun. I love, I would love to do stunts. I used to do, I used to want to be a stunt man when I was a kid. I wanted to go to stunt school. My mom, she shut that down pretty quick. <laughs> pro, pro, probably for uh rational reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Marcus wrote a fantastic question here about wanting to know if you're going to revive Take the Crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a rough one. That's a that's a deep cut. Um, ah, probably not. Honestly, dude, uh -huh. like, yeah. um, I, I I keep in touch with those guys as well. There's some of some of my good buddies, but um, they've all kind of moved on. Um, Nick, who is like the main songwriter, works for like a lot of different bands and stuff, and and uh, so he's kind of in the music scene. But Ryan, who played keyboards. He's like a huge uh, artist. He started as a street artist and now he like has moved into like this, he's like a million, multi-millionaire art seller. And he, he did like the NFT thing and stuff as well. And um, so and to make money, leave metalcore. Is that the lesson metalcore. we're kind of learning here? Yes, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Just gonna, <laughs> <Sad break. laughs> yeah. But unless you're like, yeah, one of like three bands, <laughs> but no, um, yeah. And you get a tour smart. Like, I think we've always, we've always um, been pretty intelligent on how we tour. We've, we've toured within our means. And, um, you know, if we, we couldn't do a bus that tour, it didn't make sense. We wouldn't, you know, if we didn't have, uh, if we knew it was going to be a smaller tour, we didn't bring too much production. We didn't have a big crew. And I think a lot of bands, uh, we watched a lot of bands make that mistake and then be broke and then not, and then break up because they're like, I'm not making money. It's like, yeah, I know. You have a fucking bus and four crew and a video guy and a fucking, you know what I mean? A light show. And is it, is it hard though? Is it, is it hard to tell 20 year olds things that you learned like from being in the industry for a certain amount of years? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, a lot of these bands you go on tour with are obviously like younger kids. Right. So it's like, they have a dream yeah. of what they think this lifestyle is. It's so true. It's so, it's funny you say that. Yeah. There's, um, so, you know, some of them are like appreciative of it. Like there was, um, Kingdom of Giants, we brought out. They're not 20 year old. I mean, they're they're younger for sure, but um they were really cool. They were like asking us stuff and and going like, yo, what do you do if, for this and that and blah, blah, blah. And how did you guys get through that? You know, so um you know, I felt I felt kind of cool. I was like, oh, we're like the vets on the tour, you know, we're like, <laughs> you know, I'm like the Yoda of Metalcore. So <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, let's mark, let's mark that for a future Twitter update. <laughs> so if if yeah. bless the fall isn't your full-time job at the moment what is um i i got into videography um kind of right before we broke up um or took a break not broke up but it was like uh, i started um filming and doing editing and uh doing like marketing videos um i did a whole series of uh videos for this drum school there's like this massive drum school called drumeo and they had like millions of subscribers. And um, I actually, they're based out of uh, Abbotsford, which isn't far from here. And I kind of went in there with like, hey, I'm looking for a job. And they're like, well, what do you do? I'm like, I don't know. I kind of like video <laughs> stuff. I don't know. So I had an, I was like, do you guys have any like day in the life of a touring drummer? Like, they're like, no. I'm like, oh, well, can I, can I shoot something for you guys? You know, maybe put something together, like, like mini documentaries. And I actually reached out to Aaron from Under Oath just on a, on a whim. I'm like, yo, dude, like, can Solid I feel coming to Van Vancouver, you know? And he's like, fuck yeah, let's do it. And he, <laughs> he was like the best fucking person to start with because he's so cool. He's so informative. He's great in front of the camera. He's so like gregarious and can tell a story and is down to do anything. Cause I was like, let's go do something um, fun that you would do like, you know, on a, on a regular day of touring, like let's do don't just get a coffee and go back to the venue like so he we went to a record store and he like flipped through some records talked about his favorite albums um went to like a vintage uh clothing store and he had a, a t-shirt made 
like they made t-shirts there, like right, like in oh. like right in front of you. So we had a t-shirt made. And then we got some coffee, did the dinner thing, and um, and it was just this really cool short documentary. And uh, and they loved it. Like the the company was like, dude, we need like ten more of these. I was like, really? I That's like, pretty ambitious of you to kind of walk in there and just be like, hey, can I do something for you? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and they well, just kind of like shrug and they're like, sure. And then it just kind of works out. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually they they ended up, high, they wanted me to do editing and um, and they use Premiere Pro and I use Final Cut. So I was fucking completely lost and I felt so stupid. I would go in and try to edit these little videos. That they, they would shoot these really long form drum lessons. And they're like, can you cut these into like social media clips? You know, and I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I, they're like, we use Premiere Pro. We don't have anything else. Like that's what everyone works in. And I'm like, okay. So I had to like, you know, it's like trying to drive a stick shift in England. You're fully self-taught you know, though, like, like whether it's Final Cut or Premiere Pro. What's that? You're fully self-taught. Like you learned all this on your oh, own. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just learned it. So yeah, but going back to day one of filming, I was filming like my, my niece's birthday parties and editing these little videos on iMovie and my, and my sister-in-law, it goes, people would pay for these. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, people would, pay. this is such a good memory. Like you, this is so special. Like you film this moment and that everyone kind of lived through and then, you know, forgets about, but then you like, you know, put this really cool, like meaningful piece of, you know, uh, media together. And they're like, people would pay for this. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, maybe I got something going here. So I kind of like bought a better camera and then started reaching out to people and shooting for free to start with, to like kind of build up the portfolio and, and get some, you know, and went to YouTube university, watched everything on YouTube, like literally just like, how do I, you know, color grade this thing? How do yeah, I know uh, everything I've learned is from YouTube and I <laughs> yeah. have a college degree. That's completely <laughs> yeah. insane. So. It's insane. So yeah, it's that's crazy. my, my full-time thing. Um, and it's super fun. I love shooting sports. I love uh, shooting music, obviously, stuff like that. So, yeah. So you you are technically self employed. Yes, <laughs> I'm self employed. No, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Obviously, because then you know you don't have to go and request a time off whenever you go and leave for tour or anything like that. Yeah. 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 And when things get sl like slower, like things get crazy, and then things get slow, and I just I ride the wave. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna chill. I'm like you know, doing like homeschooling the kid is, is can be a full-time job and it's in itself and taking her to play hockey and stuff. So when things slow down, I'm like, I'm okay with it. I don't try to like, I don't get worried and scramble and try to go find more work. You know what I mean? I'm just like, all right, I'll just like, I'll ride this. And if it gets real bad, you know, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, maybe I'm envious of your disposition, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ride the wave, baby. <laughs> um, you guys flew all the way to Antarctica to take a photo? Am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank our record label for that one. They trusted us. <laughs> they had you, no were, music. you just tried to like max out there like a cow? What are you doing? Oh, man. It's funny because like they, we, they had no music or anything yet. And then we were like, hey, so we want to sh shoot a video with this director. They're like, yeah, you kind of need a song to shoot a music video. And I'm like, <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. It's like, we'll worry about that later. So they, they actually like on, on good faith, we had this crazy idea. I, I have the like DM still from Eric because Eric was like sending me um, images from from Iceland. And he's like, dude, like if we ever put an album out again, like it would be sick to share. Or like if we ever put it. Are, are these like, is he vacationing there or are these just Google photos? And he's like, man, <laughs> no, he's just crazy. Oh, no, he he's googling he's like came across this like cool you know this really cool you know th these like these landscapes and he's like dude like if we ever get the band back together it'd be sick to go, like go shoot here and um it's so fucking funny to imagine a guy sitting in arizona googling pictures of iceland being like this is the dream <laughs> yeah this this is the dream <laughs> it's right a really here. hot yeah. day the yeah diamond beach black sand beach yeah it, but he's like sending me photos and i and i go i'll ask i'll ask douglas who is like a world-renowned photographer he doesn't even do photography anymore but every now and then he'll pick up he'll pick up the camera for something special like uh he shot the last thing he shot besides us was like mike tyson like a whole you know what i mean like that's what okay he all right so not like some music specific photographer just okay no. gotcha 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 he did a lot of bands at one point um so he shot us for the hollow bodies promo stuff he shot like uh, uh we came as roman or crown the empire and uh, he's in a few bands band things but um yeah he does like big, big time big time shit 
and his yeah his whole rig is like insane but um he he i i texted him i go hey man like would you want to go to iceland do some take some photos he goes i will come for, shoot for free if you guys just pay for my my accommodations he's like it's my favorite place on earth and we're like holy shit okay because yeah we're like all right so we went to the label i'm like all right listen <laughs> we got a proposition <laughs> yeah like this, this no is... music at all but we are promising that we will have a sick song eventually <laughs> but uh we got this dope photographer to shoot for free um can we spend our our marketing you know basically our, all our promo budget on on like a, a flight and like accommodations and um they said yeah and we're like holy shit okay this is crazy so huge shout out to rise for did uh did none of that budget carry over from all the years you guys were on hiatus yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude we like <laughs> all well it's crazy like all of our albums recoup and like a lot of bands don't recoup from their from their records and this is something no one really talks about but like labels take hits man all the time dude like bands don't recoup all the time like every now like you see a band like spirit box obviously is doing great so they're gonna keep pushing spirit box because they're like yeah they're, they're, right. they're well for us we're kind of we're making back our investment um and so uh we're, we're one of the bands that that has done well on rise and so i think i think that probably came into play where they're like oh dude like we trust you guys you guys uh you know and i'm like trust me the comeback will be good it'll be worth it so yeah we flew out there and didn't post about it and it took everything in our you know <laughs> in our bodies to not post a photo of iceland so, when, when was that uh it was last year at this time we were there really? yeah yeah we were supposed to go in august um but eric's mom got, got sick and we had to cancel that trip and so we re, re redid it for october and um it was uh yeah it was so fucking cool i i literally i i we need to go back like it was just like obviously you spent more than like a like a 24 hours there right like did you make like a weekend out of it or it was like three days but it goes by fast because you drive so much to get to places um so it was uh it was like three days in total so we were just trying to get as much content as we could um i wish we could have shot a video out there um but yeah time time constraints and budget but it was like yeah it was like it looks photoshopped and that's what was what the big controversy was and in fact for the crew, i mean it's a funny controversy to be fair but <laughs> hilarious and i had to call it out i was like i love this right now like and in fact like we would send back like our dailies like we take shots like there's one that got posted for the emo is not dead cruise if you saw with the waterfall behind us yeah. and i sent that photo to our label and they're like tell me that like this is photoshop right like there's like you know, this is, this doesn't look, this looks fake. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. This is out of camera. Like, like nothing's been done. You know, like your photographer was too good is apparently the problem. <laughs> yeah, dude. It just, it, it's so surreal when you're there and like every, it's always kind of like a little bit overcast. So there's not really shadows. So we're like, that was one of the things that he saw, they're like, these guys, Peter Pan, there's no shadows on anything. This is so, <laughs> this is such bad Photoshop. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy to me. <laughs> Bro, so you that, hold up your plate ticket at every picture? It's crazy. <laughs> I know. And I have like, I have behind the scenes from that waterfall one. And I want to put, I want to like put like a little thing together because that, that place looked fucking unreal. I, I took my drone. So I got some really cool drone shots of it. And, uh, and I was like filming, you know, like when our photographer is there and then like filming the waterfall, I'm like, this doesn't look real. Like even taking it through your phone, it just looks like something you had to, you had to find on the internet or AI generated. <laughs> I feel like you could repurpose some of that footage of BTF hard styling for a video. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be sick. Or at least like a lyric video, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least. Um, Bless has featured your wife, the very talented uh, Lights, yeah. on a song. And of course, your daughter, Rocket, on another. What are the chances <laughs> the whole family joins forces for uh, a track on the next album? Man, I mean, dude, to get all of them on there, like Rocket's now starting to kind of like get into music a little bit. She isn't not, not really interested in playing anything. She like taps on stuff. So I feel like if we sat her down in a drum set, she could figure it out. But um, she sings into a lot. Into music, of, like know. like into Bless the Fall or? Well, it's, no, just like in general, she'd be like, no, 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 no. She'd be like, and she'll like beatbox and stuff. And I'm like, oh, she's got like, 
there's some rhythm there, you know, and, um, but we're not, we're not pushing anything on her. We're kind of like, um, hockey's kind of like a, a goal of hers. Um, she's like, I want to get to the highest level. Like she tells me that all the time. I'm like, all right, well, you know, it takes a lot of work. So, you know, going back to earlier, it's like, now that there's a goal, you know what I mean? Like a, a goal for, for, for her to like, to strive for. It's something that, you know, she can, she can have a reason to work out and, and practice and stuff. So. Okay. This, this, this is a weird aside, but do you have like a goal for yourself as like a videographer? Man, I, you know what? I wanted to shoot a short film. Um, I still do. I still do. And um, Lights and I always talk about it. She wants to, she wants to like write a, a script for, for like a short film and like a movie. So um, that would be a great goal. I know there's so much like work that goes into it and um, it's a lot of shit that I don't know, but there's a lot I do know. And there's, I have a lot of great resources and um, people who have done films and music videos, stuff that I always reach out to when I have a, an issue where I'm like, hey, man, like, how would you film something like this? Like, what would you use? So I feel like that would be a really cool goal is just to um, do a project with her and, and you know, get actors and um, get proper lighting and, and a crew and stuff like that and go film film something like that like short film and that would be yeah but cool. yeah doing more music videos would be cool they're super fun um, you you did one for lights right i did one for her and then i i filmed like five videos for this rapper that lives out here his name's snack the ripper which is such a sick name <laughs> and uh he's the man he's the man he's kind of like old is school. he next uh is he, he he's been next yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's a little, he's been around for a while and he does really well in Canada and stuff like that. And Europe actually smashes it out in Europe, uh, even more so than like in the States. But um, he's got, he's like super talented and um, he's got like an old school vibe to him, you know, cause we're, we're on the same age. So he's not like doing any like mumble rapping or like auto tune stuff. And he can actually play guitar and, and stuff like that too. So he'll play guitar in his songs and have some rock influence, um, you know, parts, but uh He's awesome because he's just a maniac and wants to fucking do anything. He's like, bro, I want to rent a fucking hovercraft and ride, <laughs> drive it on the river and then pull up to a sandbar and then like light, have a fire and like smoke and like be on the sandbar. And like, you can fly your drone. I'm like, yeah, dude, let's do all that shit. Is that not <laughs> daunting to you at all when somebody comes to you with like these really big brain ideas or is this just like an opportunity to learn something? Oh, it's opportunity for sure. Yeah. Okay. Wait, he's like, I know a guy that owns a hovercraft. I'm like, Yep. <laughs> let's go you know let's do it and so it gave me like there's one where i i wanted to shoot in this there's like a huge abandoned barn and then we went scouted it and i was like dude we should film in here like blah blah, blah. and he wants to shoot everything gorilla he wants to just like jump out the car and film and i'm like all right like so do i but we want this to like still look fucking dope like i want it to look like there's some production so I, we have to kind of agree sometimes on like i'll just pack all the stuff in my jeep and i can i can plug shit into my jeep so like yeah. there's yeah so like we pull we found this parking garage and just pulled up and i had all my shit and so he, he we just jumped out and i like plugged all my lights in we have a smoke machine that we run that runs on like gas or whatever like a propane or something so we had a we had the fog machine and like all my lights all like all the cables just ran right to my Jeep to like an extension cord or you know, a power strip. And we filmed them just there. And I'm like, this is the, like, you know, the push, the push and pull, like we're agreeing, you know, on being, you know, spontaneous, but also there's production and now it looks fucking, and then he's always like, Oh man, I'm glad I listened to you. Like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> well, it, it sounds like a good, like working relationship at that point. Yeah. And so he, yeah, he's, when we shot the first one together, he's like, you're going to shoot all my videos. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Like, and he pays me well. And he's, he's a good dude. We go, I go swim in his house sometimes and, you know, hang out with his family and stuff like that. So uh, he gave me the opportunity to learn. Cause I learned every time I go shoot with him, I learn something and it's always fun. That's awesome. So much, so much of the new bow lore over the course of like four years. <laughs> I know, man. And, and it kind of, it kind of just transfers over from being in a band to shooting videos where like, you get it, right. You get the energy that you need, right? From, you know, and you get kind of like what it takes to pull the energy out of someone, you know, when you're just shooting and the director's not giving you any direction or the director's like, you know, all right. Yeah. Next shot. And you're kind of like, oh, okay. Like, was that good even, you know, like, <laughs> So I, I've taken that into consideration when I'm shooting of like, okay, make sure that, you know, you're communicative and, you know, you're, you're pulling the best out of the artist. So, yeah. 
Okay. I would love to see you film the next Bless the Fall video. I feel like that would be exciting. You talking about oh, ideas that you have and all that stuff. Yeah. It'd be dope. I have a, I have a couple, you know, I have a couple. Sometimes they're a little like out of budget, but I, I have a couple. But <laughs> would you guys go like uh, as crazy as you did with, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the song. Uh, hey, baby, the, the yeah. fucking... <laughs> The hangover video, essentially. Do you have anything that high concept that you'd ever want to do again? I mean, a, hey, a, like a part two to that would be sick. It would be like, I mean, I don't know if you saw like our comeback video that we put out, like from that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a little compilation of you oh, got right. like you pick Eric up at like Starbucks and stuff like that. It was, like, I got Eric, the suitcase or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Eric was selling a house, and we like all ran up. So that yes, was like yes, yes, yes. Mighty Ducks two inspired. Like if you watch the intro, of Mighty Ducks two. It's like the same song, the same music, same concept. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like, that was kind of like a, not high budget, but like a bigger concept that we had to like balance with all of our schedules. We did it while we were in Arizona and all of us were like, kind of like Eric had to work and then Jared had to go work. And then we had to like rehearse. And then, you know, we had to be like, okay, we got to go film Elliot's part here. I got to go film my part here and, and stuff like that. So it was, it was fun to like, I had all, I had the whole thing plotted out in my head, how I wanted it to look. And it came out kind of even better than I'd imagine. It did so, come out really fucking good to yeah. be fair. At a smaller level, was the standing outside of a hot topic holding a sign idea yours as well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because the, the idea was like, I, I kind of wrote it on, I was like, you know, it'd be funny. It's just like a photo of me holding the thing. And I, I kind of look like a sign guy when I put the glasses on with the hair. And then, uh, and then that kind of just like, turned into like, well, what if I went in downtown Vancouver and I had a buddy just take some photos? And then I was in it. And then I was going to LA to go right and like work on some shit. And uh, someone's like, oh, I think Lights was like, why don't you take the sign with you and just do it in Hollywood? I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, so we, yeah, we hired a, a video dude named Manny and he came out and, and we just like, yeah, we just literally walked around. I literally got kicked out of that by the security guard, kicked me out and then went on to Hollywood Boulevard and like, was just standing around with all like the other weirdos. So I look normal compared to like, did you get recognized? <laughs> huh? Did you get recognized? A couple times. Yeah. Oh, not yeah, as that's I, good. I, that's I good. Glasses, I like to hear that. Like the hair was funny. And so like, um, what it, the person in front of hot, like one person, if I stand in front of hot talk for an hour, someone's recognized. Me. Right. <laughs> right. 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 That would be the place. You know what I mean, yeah. like that's the place, you know, like, <laughs> You know, so uh, like Mike Tyson hanging out in front of a boxing gym, like he's someone's gonna notice him at, yeah. at some point, right? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he um, uh, he yeah, it was it came out good, it came out cool, like funnier than I expected because getting kicked out and then like you know, a fan recognizing me and you know, it, and, and just like the environment in Hollywood and just you know, there's just people, you know, tons of people. right, there's no better place to go do something like that, yeah, 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 it worked out, it worked out great, and yeah, I was uh. I was pretty stoked. I was going to try to make it a series. I was like, oh, I should do it. And I'm like, you know what? This is, this is funny. Like, let's just leave it. <laughs> I'm burning out. You know what I mean? I wanna, you're right. Yeah. You're right. We'll make another idea that do that. Well, listen, we don't want to keep it too much longer. We got just a couple more questions, Mark. So I'm going to yeah. let you go ahead. Are yeah. you and Lynn Gunn still best friends? Uh, We are buddies. Yeah, we're buddies. We're not like, like best, best friends, but we definitely like, she's super busy. And like, you know, we're, we're, we don't live anywhere near each other. And, you know, I, I'll reach out every now and then um, and just be like, dude, the new songs are fucking dope. She's like, thanks, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we keep in touch for sure. But, you know, we you guys were, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you guys were like bike gang during Warp Tour? Oh, yeah. We had a, a, a pretty, pretty big little crew, you know, a big little crew. <laughs> was, Whose idea uh, was that? How did that yeah. come together? Just do you all happen to exercise around the same time every day? Yeah. No, I I bought I bought like a BM, me and Eric bought BMXs. And then I was like, yo, you guys need to get bikes. You guys gotta get bikes. Like it's so fun. And <laughs> Lynn was like, she was like saying how it was such a great, like sort of like mental health break because she was the kind of person who didn't leave the venue because she felt like she was gonna miss something, like on tour you know, uh, she would like not go very far. She would stay, be in the bus or be in the venue. And like, you know, that would be it. And I'm like, dude, you got to get out, man. Like, you got to just like, go, go see the world a little bit. Let's, let's get these bikes, son. <laughs> like, let's go, let's go, like, just go ride, you know? And, and she was like, man, I'm so glad we did that because like, it kind of just taught me that I can kind of do other shit on tour. I don't have to, you know, be stuck, be stuck in the venue or the bus. And I can just kind of like free my mind and not worry about the show for, you know, an hour or two. 
Oh, that's great. So, so not just fun, actually incredibly healthy. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It was, yeah, it was, it was a good time, man. And, and Warped Tour is the time to do that. Like just cruising out in the back by all the other bands and like the barbecues and stuff like that. It's a whole vibe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we bought tickets to the Fearless Friends Tour in 2011. Oh, sick. And we missed it. We no, like, what? And went. I know, man. So I was going to ask, I know none of you are on Fearless anymore, but what are the chances you motionless and white, the word alive, Chunk, no Captain Chunk, and tonight can run that back? <laughs> Probably zero, but no, <laughs> no, not, not completely zero. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule. I wouldn't say anything is zero percent, but uh most we'd have to get people. tonight alive back together yeah. so i guess we yeah. start there <laughs> get there I'm together which is great i don't know what's going on with chunk they're, are they a band still? they're alive they, they put out an album the last couple of years all right chunks chunks in probably we're lives in for sure yep. and we got to get motionless and white to take us on tour so. <laughs> what you're telling me is it's very easy it's not hard it's not <laughs> hard i originally thought when you mentioned it so uh, Marcus, you had one more on there. Yeah. So Awakening very recently turned 12 years old. I was curious what your favorite memory from that recording process was. It's by far me kicking a hole through the wall at the hotel um, because I lost at Mario Kart. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Mario Kart 12 years ago. We're talking we? This was, so we were, we played GameCube. Uh -huh. So that's Double Dash where you yeah. get to be the two characters. Okay. And like, we still play get the GameCube version. It's just so like, honestly, they figured it out with that version, and it hasn't been. <laughs> You've never been so wrong, but I'll let you go ahead. It's the only. It's the only. It's the only version that exists to me, and I've tried others, and I'm like, man, they just they've never been able to recapture that magic of Double Dash. So, do you still game um, like, or do you just play like GameCube games? I play NHL a lot of NHL, and then oh, Diablo three. Me and the wife. <laughs> We, we, we hunker down on the couch with some ice cream and just rip Diablo, like some slobs. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, that sounds nice to be fair. Yeah. It's nice. A good time. Uh, all right. Uh, f f final question. Um, is not even a question. Good. It's open-ended. What's happening next with Bless the Fall? <laughs> What's happening? <to> what? <laughs> What's happening next with Bless the Fall? Oh, well, we're going to go play a cruise, baby. That's what's All right. Next. Yeah. You know what I mean though. Come on. Like... <laughs> We're gonna, you know what? We the plan was to to play. Um, you know, the plan was to do the tour, and if if people came out and cared about our band still, then we would talk about kind of what's next. So um, okay, that, so so far success. So far, it was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was kind of better than we than we would have ever imagined, honestly. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely cool. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board and just kind of see where everyone's heads at and see what's possible, what's not possible. And yeah, who knows? We'll, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back. So don't God do this to me, man. God damn it. <laughs> what a great way to go out. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Bo. We appreciate you coming on today. Of course, guys. Thank you. I appreciate you rock. it. Thank you, man.